Hi everyone, in this problem we're going to find the domain of this function. So the domain is the set of all values of x that you can plug into the function that actually makes sense. So if it was just log x, um, we know that for logs you can only take the log of a positive number. So x here has to be positive, so the domain here is all positive numbers. So here um, it's not just x, it's all of this. So basically this whole thing which I've circled is our x. This whole thing has to be positive, right? Because you can only take the log of a positive number. Now, it doesn't mean we might not get negative numbers as part of our answer. That's fine. It's just this whole thing here, which I've circled, is positive. So the very first step is to take this whole piece and set it greater than zero. So I believe that's something you should just memorize, right? Whenever you have a log and you're looking for the domain, just automatically go to this step here. So how are we going to do this? Let's use something called the test point method. So test point method. There's a couple of ways to do it. You can do it graphically or you can use this method. Let's go with this method. This method is a little bit easier to follow once you understand it. So the test point method says that the very first step is that you have a single term on one side and zero on the other. So we've already got the zero. We just have to get one term here. We have two. So let's try to factor this. It looks like we can pull out an x, and that'll leave us with x squared minus 1, and that's greater than 0. And we can actually do better than this, right? We can actually factor this again. This second factor here is the difference of squares. So this is x, parentheses, x minus 1, x plus 1, and that's greater than 0. Okay, so that's, we've accomplished step one now in our test point method, which is to have a single term on one side and zero on the other. The second step in the test point method is to set each factor equal to zero. Okay, so I'm going to set x equal to zero, x minus one equal to zero, and then x plus one equal to zero. People have a hard time with this step because they feel like they should set each piece greater than zero. No. Uh, we're following a method. The reason we do this in the method, by the way, if you're wondering why we're doing this, is because we're looking for the places where this expression can change sign. So if it's going to change sign, it's going to it's going to go from negative to positive or from positive to negative, and somewhere in between, it's going to have to be zero. So we're looking for when is it exactly equal to zero, so we can find those places where the sign change can occur. In any case, it's something you memorize. You just take each piece and set it equal to zero. So we have zero, here we have one, and then here we have negative one. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. Uh, so now, hence the name test point method, <laughs> we're gonna pick test points. So you take each of these numbers and you plot them on a number line. So here's negative one, here is zero, and here is one. And you can Pick any number you like um, besides these. So an easy number that we can use is maybe 2. I'm going to use 2 because it's a nice number. So we're going to check 2. And you can plug it in any way you like. You can plug it into this one or you can plug it into this one. I'm going to plug it into this one. So we'll get 2 cubed minus 2. And we want to see if that is actually um, greater than 0. So 2 cubed is 8, so we get 8 minus 2, and again, we want to see if that's greater than 0. So 6 greater than 0. Yes, that's true. Yes. So because it's true, and the 2 came from over here on the right, right, right because 2 is bigger than 1, we shade here. So now what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to pick a number here. If it's true, you shade here. If it's not true, you don't. Then you pick a number over here. If it's true, you shade. If it's not true, you don't. And then you pick another number over here. And if it's true, you shade. And if it's not true, you don't. That is extremely tedious. There is a super cheap trick. Whenever these are all ones or threes or fives, whenever you don't have like twos and fours here, you can do this trick. The pattern is always shade, no shade, shade, no shade. So shade, no shade, shade, no shade. Again, this works almost every time. The only time it won't work is when you have things being squared or raised to an even power. But otherwise, this really cheap shade, no shade, shade, no shade trick 
will save you hours on your life, depending on how many problems you're doing. We're done, by the way. Um, this is a greater than, so we can use parentheses. And now we can write the final answer down. I'll write it up here in red. So negative 1 to 0. Looks dangerous, doesn't it? <laughs> Union 1 to infinity. Kind of a cool problem. Uh, kind of a cool problem. I, I think I've done a similar problem to this before, but I did it graphically. I went through and I graphed this, and that's a lot more work. It requires a lot more knowledge to graph this. You have to use the leading coefficient test. You have to know things about multiplicities of zeros, etc. This method just requires that you know the test point method, so it's a little bit easier to use. Also, depending on the graph, how you graph it is different. This method will work for pretty much anything, so it's a really good way to find uh, the domain of the log of something like this. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.